on cosmic fire. One, two, three, four, five. The emotional or astral plane. The mental plane. The intuitional or the Buddhic plane. The spiritual, atmic, or nirvanic plane, by means of the five senses and their correspondences on all the five planes. One, two, three, four, five. Hearing, touch, sight, taste, smell. By the time the fifth round is reached, Three-fifths of the human family will have attained this point and will have their five senses fully functioning on the three planes in the three worlds, leaving the two other planes to be subjugated during the remaining two rounds. I would here point out a fact that is little realized, that in this fivefold evolution of man and in this solar system, the two remaining rounds in any planetary cycle, and the has an occult link with the Buddhic plane. That above the top of the head, which is the crown, and has relation with the Atmic plane. We do not deal with the lower centers of generation, nor with the spleen which has a direct connection with the etheric, and is the transmitter of prana, they have been dealt with earlier. The centers in the human being deal fundamentally with the fire aspect in man, or with his divine spirit they are definitely connected with the monad, with the will aspect, with immortality, with existence, with the will to live, and with the inherent powers of spirit. They are not connected with objectivity and manifestation, but with force, or the powers of the divine life. The correspondence in the macrocosm can be found in the force which manipulates the cosmic nebulae and which by its whirling rotary motion eventually builds the into planets or spheroidal bodies. These planets are each of them an expression of the will to live, a some cosmic entity, and the force that swirled, that rotated, that built, that solidified, and that continues to hold in form coherence is the force of some cosmic being. This force originates on cosmic mental level, from certain great foci there, descends to the cosmic astral, forming corresponding cosmic focal points, and on the fourth cosmic etheric level, the Buddhist plane of our solar system finds its outlet in certain great centers. These 166 ATR 
CREATIFP on cosmic fire. Centers are again reflected or reproduced in the three worlds of human endeavor. The heavenly men, therefore, have centers on three solar planes, a fact to be remembered. A. B. On the monadic plane, the plane of the seven rays. On the Buddhic plane, where the masters and their disciples form the 49 centers in the bodies of the seven heavenly men. C. On the fourth etheric physical plane, where the sacred planets, the dense bodies in etheric matter of the heavenly men, are to be found. Here again we can trace the microcosmic correspondence. In the human being the centers are found on the mental plane from which originates the impulse for physical plane existence, for the will to incarnate, from thence they can be traced to the astral level, and eventually to the etheric levels, to the fourth ether, where they practically go through the same evolution that the planetary centers went through, and are instrumental in bringing about objectivity, being the force centers. The centers are formed entirely of streams of force, pouring down from the ego, who transmits it from the monad. In this we have the secret of the gradual vibratory quickening of the centers as the ego first comes into control, for activity, and later after initiation, the monad, thus bringing about changes and increased vitality. Within these spheres of fire or of pure life force, the centers, therefore, when functioning properly, form the body of fire, which eventually is all that is left, first to man in the three worlds, and later to the monad. This body of fire is the body incorruptible, 72 or indestructible, spoken of by Saint Paul, and is the product of evolution, of the perfect blending of the three fires, which ultimately destroy the form. When the form is 72 Bible, I core 15, 53. P-H-Y-S-I-C-A-L-A-N-D-A-S-T-R-A-L-M-O-T-I-O-N-167 Destroyed there is left this intangible spiritual body of fire, one pure flame, distinguished by seven brilliant centers of intense or burning. This electric fire is the result of the bringing together of the two poles and demonstrates at the moment of completed one meant, the occult truth of the words, our God is a consuming fire. 73. Three of these centers are called major centers, as they embody the three aspects of the threefold monad will, love and intelligence. L. 2. 3. The head center, the heart center, the throat center, the monad, will or power, the ego, love and wisdom, the personality, activity or intelligence. The other two centers have to do primarily with the etheric body and with the astral plane. The throat center synthesizes the entire personality life, and is definitely connected with the mental plane, the three planes, and the two higher planes, and the three centers with the two other centers, the heart and head. Yet, we must not forget that the center at the base of the spine is also a synthesizer, as would normally be expected, if it is recognized that the lowest plane of all manifestation is the point of deepest reflection. This lowest center, by synthesizing the fire of Kundalini and the pranic fires, eventually blends and merges with the fire of mind, and later with the fire of spirit, producing thus consummation. We must disabuse our minds of the idea that these centers are re-physical things. They are whirlpools of force that swirl etheric, astral and mental
yellow matter into activity of some kind. Because the action is rotary, the result produced in matter is a circular effect that can be seen by the clairvoyant as fiery wheels situated. 1. 2. In the region of the spine, the lowest part. Between the ribs, just below the diaphragm. 73 Bible, Hugh, IV, 24, Hebrews 12, 29. 168. ATREATISE on cosmic fire. 3. 4. 5. In the region of the left breast. In the center of the throat. Just above the top of the head. I would like to describe these centers in greater detail, dealing with them as seen in etheric matter, and basing what I say upon a similar statement by Mr. C. W. Leadbeater in, Inner Life, Volume 1, page 447 to 460. We will note the colors and petals. 1, 2, 3, 4. 5. A. The base of the spine, 4 petals. These petals are in the shape of a cross, and radiate with orange fire. The solar plexus, 10 petals rosy color with admixture of green. The heart center, 12 petals glowing golden. The throat center, 16 petals of a silvery blue, with blue predominating. The head center in its twofold divisions. Between the eyebrows, consisting of 96 petals, one half of the lotus being rose and yellow, and the other half blue and purple. B. The very top of the head. A center consisting of 12 major petals of white and gold, and 960 secondary petals arranged around the central 12. This makes a total of 1068 petals in the two head centers, making the one center for 356 triplicities. All these figures have an occult significance. Just as the monad is the sum total of all the three aspects, and of the seven principles of man, so is the head center a replica of this, and has within its sphere of influence seven other centers with itself for synthesis. These seven centers are likewise divided into the three major and the four minor centers, with their union and consummation seen in the gorgeous center surmounting and enveloping them all. There are also three physical centers, called P-H-Y-S-I-C-A-L-A-N-D-A-S-T-R-A-L-M-O-T-I-O-N 169 A B C The Altimedia Center The Pineal Gland The Pituitary Body With Four Lesser Centers these four lesser centers are blended in that center which we call the Alta Major Center and need not concern us. I would here also point out that there is a close connection, A, between the Alta Major Center and the Throat Center, B, C, between the Heart Center and the Pituitary Body, between the Head Center and the Pineal Gland, it would repay the student to contemplate the interesting succession of triangles that are to be found in the way in which they must be linked by the progression of the fire before that fire can perfectly vivify them, and thence pass on to other transmutations. We might enumerate some of these triangles, bearing always in mind that According to the ray so will proceed the geometric rising of the fire, and according to the ray so will the points be touched in ordered sequence. Herein lies one of the secrets of initiation, and herein is found some of the dangers entailed in a too quick publication of information concerning the rays. 1. A. 
B C two A B C three A B C the phrenic triangle the shoulder center the center near the diaphragm the spleen man control from the astral plane the base of the spine the solar plexus the heart man control from the mental plane the base of the spine the heart the throat 170 A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E on Cosmic Fire 4 A B C 5 A B C 6 A B C Man partially controlled by the ego, advanced man, the heart, the throat, the head, i.e. The four lesser centers and their synthesis, the Alta Center. Spiritual man to the third initiation. The heart. The throat. The seven head centers. Spiritual man to the fifth initiation. The heart. The seven head centers. The two many petaled lotuses. All these different periods show different triangular radiances. We must not infer from this that when the fire is centered in one triangle it is not demonstrating in others. Once the fire has free passage along any triangle it flames continuously, but always there is one triangle more radiant and luminous than the others, and it is from these glowing triangles of light issuing from wheels and vortices of fire that the clairvoyant and the teachers of the race can appraise a man's position in the scheme of things, and judge of his attainment. At the culmination of life experience, and when man has reached his goal, each triangle is a radiant path of fire, and each center a wheel of living fiery force rotating at terrific speed, the center at this stage not only rotates in a specific direction, but literally turns upon itself, forming a living flaming iridescent globe of pure fire, and holding within it a certain geometrical shape, yet with all vibrating so rapidly that the eye can scarcely follow it. Above all, at the top of the head will be seen a fiery display that seems to put all the other centers into insignificance. From the heart of this many-petaled lotus issues a flame of fire with the basic hue of a man's ray. This flame. P-H-Y-S-I-C-A-L-A-N-D-A-S-T-R-A-L-M-O-T-I-O-N-171 mounts upward and seems to attract downward a sheet of electric light, which is the downflow from the spirit on the highest plane. This marks the blending of the fires and the deliverance of man from the trammels of matter. We might now note that the evolution of these centers of force can be portrayed, not only in words, but under the same five symbols that have so often a cosmic interpretation. 1. The circle. At this stage the center is seen simply as a saucer-like depression, as Mr. C. W. Leadbeater expresses it, of dimly glowing fire, a fire diffused throughout but of no real intensity. The wheel rotates slowly, but so slowly as to be almost inappreciable. This corresponds to the little developed stage, and to the early Lemurian root race, and to that period wherein man was simply animal, all that was being formed was a field for the appearance of the spark of mind. 2. The circle with the point in the center. The center is here seen with a point of glowing fire in the middle of the saucer-like depression, and the rotation becomes more rapid. This corresponds to the stage wherein mind is beginning to be felt and thus to later Lemurian days. 3. The Divided Circle 
At this stage the point of light in the center of the vortex of fire is becoming more active, rotary motion causes it to burn more brightly, and to cast off rays of fire in two directions, which appear to split the vortex into two. The motion is much accelerated, and the dividing flame in the vortex shoots back and forth, stimulating the glow of the center itself, till a much greater point of radiance is achieved. This corresponds to Atlantean days. 4. The circle divided into 4. We come now to the point where the center is exceedingly active, with the cross within its periphery rotating as well as the wheel itself, and causing an effect of great beauty and activity. The man has reached a stage of very high development. 172 ATRE ATISCONCOSMIGFIRE Mentally, corresponding to the fifth group race, or to the fifth round in the larger cycle, he is conscious of two activities within himself, symbolized by the rotating wheel and the inner rotating cross. He is sensing the spiritual, though actively functioning in the personal life, and the development has reached a point wherein he is nearing the probationary path. 5. The swastika. At this stage the center becomes fourth dimensional, the inner rotating cross begins to turn upon its axis, and to drive the flaming periphery to all sides so that the center is better described as a sphere of fire than as a wheel. It marks the stage of the path in its two divisions, for the process of producing the effect described covers the whole period of the path. At the close, the centers are seen as globes of radiant fire with the spokes of the wheel or the evolution of the cross from the point in the center merging and blending into a fire that burneth up the whole. A brief sentence has its place here owing to its relation to this subject. Another sentence is also added here, which, if meditated upon, will prove of real value and will have a definite effect upon one of the centers, which center it is for the student himself to find out. These two sentences are as follows. The secret of the fire lies hid in the second letter of the sacred word. The mystery of life is concealed within the heart. When the lower point vibrates, when the sacred triangle glows, when the point, the middle center, and the apex likewise burn, then the two triangles the greater and the lesser merge with one flame which burneth up the whole. The fire within the lesser fire findeth its progress much impelled when the circle of the moving and the unmoving, of the lesser wheel within the greater wheel that moveth not in time, findeth a twofold outlet, it then shineth with the glory of the twofold one and of his sixfold brother. Bohat rusheth through space. He searcheth for his compli. P-H-Y-S-I-C-A-L-A-N-D-A-S-T-R-A-L-M-O-T-I-O-N-173 Meant The breath of the unmoving one, and the fire of the one who sees the whole from the beginning rush to meet each other, and the unmoving becomes the sphere of activity. Wedeke up our second point in the consideration of the centers. 2. The centers in connection with the rays. This will give us a large range of subject to be dealt with, and much food for thought, surmise and wise conjecture. All that is here stated is given simply as basic or foundation facts, upon which may be erected a structure of conjecture, and of logical reasoning, employing the imagination, and thereby affecting two things. These are an ability to expand our mental concept and to build the Antaskarana, or that bridge which all who seek to function in the Buddhic vehicle must build between higher and lower mind. 
Hence the necessity for the use of the imagination which is the astral equivalent to mental discrimination and its ultimate transmutation into intuition. All teachers, who have taken pupils in hand for training, and who seek to use them in world service, follow the method of imparting a fact oft veiled in words and blinded by symbol, and then of leaving the pupil to follow his own deductions. Discrimination is thereby developed, and discrimination is the main method whereby the spirit effects its liberation from the trammels of matter, and discerns between illusion and that which is veiled by it. Not much can be here imparted, as the subject, if dealt with at all fully, would convey too much information to those liable to misuse it. As we know, the evolution of the centers is a slow and gradual thing, and proceeds in ordered cycles varying according to the ray of a man's monad. 174. A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E -E on Cosmic Fire. The life of the pilgrim can be, for purposes of discussion, divided into three main periods. of the centuries wherein the activity aspect of the threefold self is being developed. Life after life slips away during which the aspect of manas or mind is being slowly wrought out, and the human being comes more and more under the control of his intellect, operating through his physical brain. This might be looked upon as corresponding to the period of the first solar system, wherein the third aspect logoic, that of Brahma, mind, or intelligence, was being brought to the point of achievement. Point seven four. then the second aspect began in 74 inches when the last cycle of man-bearing has been completed by that last fecund earth and humanity has reached in a mass the stage of Buddhahood and passed out of the objective existence into the mystery of Nirvana then, strikes the hour, the seen becomes the unseen, the concrete resumes its pre-cyclic state of atomic distribution. But the dead worlds left behind the onsweeping impulse do not continue dead. Motion is the eternal order of things and affinity or attraction its handmaid of all works. The thrill of life will again reunite the atom, and it will stir again in the inert planet when the time comes. Though all its forces have remained status quo and are now asleep, yet little by little it will when the hour re-strikes gather for a new cycle of man-bearing maternity, and give birth to something still higher as moral and physical types than during the preceding Manvantara. And its, cosmic atoms already in a differentiated state, differing in the producing force in the mechanical sense of motions and effects remain status quo as well as globes and everything else in the process of formation. Such as the, hypothesis fully in accordance with your mind note. 4. As planetary development is as progressive as human or race evolution, the hour of the Perlias coming catches the series of worlds at successive stages of evolution, i.e. each has attained to some one of the periods of evolutionary progress each stops there until the outward impulse of the next Manvantara sets it going from that very point like a stopped timepiece rewound. Therefore, I have used the word, differentiated. At the coming of the Pralaya no human, animal, or even vegetable entity will be alive to see it, but there will be the Earth's or globe.